This is a short video on binary and hexadecimal numbers for my students learning C and doing a little bit of cryptography. So I'm going to try to explain just as much as you need to know to understand how hex uh, works in our courses. And so I'll try to keep this, <laughs> since brevity is the soul of wit, I will be brief. So first let me remind you uh, how a place value number system works. Um, so we're all pretty familiar with one place value number system, which is the decimal number system. And when you write one, two, three, it, this is just shorthand for, this might look strange if you've never seen it before, but if you think about it, it's what our place value decimal notation means. It means that if I write one, two, three, that means one, one hundreds, two tens, and uh, three ones. And just to make everything nice and uniform here, I'm going to put a, a one there. Um, any number to the one-th power is itself. And I'm going to put a zero there because anything to the zero power is one, except for zero to the zero, which is undefined. So this is uh, what decimal numbers mean, but you can do the same thing for other number bases, like two. Um, so I could uh, try to find a way to express one, two, three decimal in terms of uh, Instead of powers of 10, I could try powers of 2. And uh, so what are the powers of 2? 128 is a power of 2, pretty close to this one, but it's too big because it's bigger than 123. Let's try 64. And if you take 64 away from this thing, what do you have left? Um, 1, 13, 9, 0, 11, 5. So fun to watch on the internet. and. Um, so there is at least 32 left here, so I'm going to add another power of 2, which is 2 to the 5th power. I'll clean all this up in a second. So this just means 1 times uh, 2 to the 6th power, right? Plus 1 times 2 to the 5th power, plus, and um, so if you take 32 away from this, you've got uh, 7 and uh, 2 there, and uh, so there's room to take away 16, so I'll do that. And that means that I'm going to add another uh, 2 to the 4th here. And uh, after I take away 16 from this, I get 11. And so there's room to take away an 8. And so I'll do that. And remember, 8 is 2 to the 3rd power. And when you take away 8 here, you get 4 left. And uh, if I take away that, I can, I can you know, complete that by, I'm done now. <laughs> so this is the entire number, all this stuff, is that right? Uh, did I do something silly? Oh yeah, I did, I did, uh, that's not four, that's three. And so I'm not quite done. So actually there are zero fours here. And so I'll put in a zero times two squared, just so I can write all the powers. So I've got three left and I need to take two away. Um, and so this is 1, 2, so this is 1 times 2 to the 1, and uh, that leaves me with 1, and that finally gives me 1, 1. So that's 1 times 2 to the 0. So if you look at what we have on this line, you'll notice that all of the, if you want to think of them as coefficients, these things that I'm multiplying times the power of uh, powers of 2, they're all either 1 or 0, and these are the binary digits of 123 is a binary number. So if you go all the way from, you know, the biggest power that you need down to uh, the single digits place, uh, then you get uh, a binary description of this number, 123. So a binary uh, description of the number 123 is 1111101 uh, in binary. And uh, so there's nothing special about powers of 2. I could do the same thing with powers of 16. Uh, I don't think uh, there are 0, 16 squareds in 123. 123 is a pretty small number, and 16 squared is pretty big. What is 16 squared? 16 squared is the same as 2 to the 4th uh, squared, which is 256. So it's definitely too big. So we have, if you want to think of it as 0, uh, 0, 16 squareds, and um, so how many 16s to the first power do we have? Let's, what should that be, like 
what is 9 times 16? That's uh, 30, no, 54. Oh my god, I forgot an elementary school. And 9 and uh, 5 is 14, that's too big. And uh, what if I take 16 away from that? Then that gives me a 3 here, 14 here, gives me an 8 there, 2, 1. It's uh, still too big, so I need, I need uh, it's 7. So it's 7 times uh, 16 to the first power. Let's see what 7 times uh, 16 is. So, oh my gosh, this is one of those things that you rarely have to do, and it's a really tough thing from elementary school. 7 plus 4 is 11. Um, so I've got, uh, that gave me 112 worth of stuff. So if I take 112 away from 123, I've got 1, 1. Um, and so that's just like, let me kind of, it would be 11 times 16 to the 0th power. <laughs> all right, let me erase all this dumb work here. So I'm now going to write down a, uh, a hexadecimal description of 123. Hexadecimal is a fancy word for base 16. And there's a problem here, which is that we want uh, we want a place value number system where the, the place of a number reflects its significance. And for that reason, I can't describe 123 as uh, 0, 7, 11. <laughs> And the reason is now that this is this is four places instead of three, but it, it really should be a three-digit number, not a four-digit number. So what we do to overcome that problem is just introduce new symbols for the numbers from uh, 10 to 15. So A is just going to be a single digit that stands for 10. B is just going to be a standard a single digit that stands for 11. C is a standard a single digit that stands for 12. Uh, D stands for 13, E stands for 14, and F stands for 15. So with that understanding, I can express 123 as 0, 7, B. And it doesn't matter whether you write uppercase or lowercase, you just need to be consistent. Um, so this is clearly a hexadecimal number because it has a B in it, but sometimes they're a little ambiguous, like if I write 77, that could be a, a decimal number or it could be a hexadecimal number. So to make it perfectly clear, it's the convention to write uh, 0x in front of hexadecimal numbers. So there's a big difference between 77 and 0x77. So 77 is just 7 times 11, but 0x77, what is 0x77? In decimal, this would be equal to 7 times 16 to the first power plus uh, 7, uh, which is a totally different number, and uh, let me use my speed crunch calculator to figure this out. It's really good for this stuff. Um, so I have, I have the output set to hexadecimal right now, but let me change the result format back to decimal. So then if I ask what is OX77, it's 119. So OX77 is the same as 119, and we could have figured that out ourselves on paper you know, you shouldn't really, if you understand it well, then the calculator will just be a convenience. I forgot what the answer was. 119. All right. Okay. So this also shows how to go from hex back to decimal. Um, as far as going from decimal to hex, sometimes you want an industrial strength method, uh, like uh, an algorithm is what I mean. So you don't have to sort of futz around and, and figure it out and think of powers of 16 and other silly things like that. So as an exercise, let me show you how to convert uh, 2010 from decimal to hex. Okay, you ready? So you just repeatedly divide by 16, and I'll explain the significance of the things that we do as we go along. So how many times does uh, 16 go into 2010? 0, 1, 16, 4, 10. Um, so it goes into um, 41 two times is 32. And then this gives you 9, 0. And then how many times does it go into 90? It goes in 5 times. And 5 times 16 is 80. And you have a remainder of 10. So this is kind of the most significant thing. The remainders are what give you the hex digits. Now, I take 125 and send 16 into 125. 
and it goes into 1 0 times, 12 0 times, but it goes into 125 7 times, and this gives you 1 12, and you bring down uh, the numbers and you get 13, and that's it. So for the second time here, the remainder is 13. Now you take 16 into 7, and of course it goes into 7 0 times with a remainder of 7. And now the, the hexadecimal expression for 2010, you can read off by reading these digits backwards. So it's OX7, uh, what is 13 again? Uh, a, B, C, D, this is D, right? And this is A. Uh, so it's uh, 7D, A. And you can confirm that really quickly with speed crunch here, OX, 7D, uh, A and right, so it works. Okay, um, so you can also do addition. This is not something you have to do very often, but it's it's sort of fun. It's good practice with other number bases. Let's just add two hexadecimal numbers. So how could you do addition here? Let's add the numbers OX4FE and OX, I'm doing plus here, OX246. And so what is 6 plus E? So that's like 6 plus 14. So that's going to be 20 in decimal. But in hex, it's going to be 116 and uh, oops, 4 single digits. So it's OX14. That's what I use here. So I write down the 4 and carry the 1, just like I would in base 10 arithmetic. Now what is 1 plus f plus 4? This is 1 plus 15 plus 4 is also 20, and so again it's OX14, so bring down the 4, carry the 1, and now you just have uh, 7. So the answer is OX744, uh, and we just did uh, addition and hexadecimal. You can also do subtraction, in which case you need to do some borrowing. It's kind of fine, I guess. Um, but that's not something that comes up a lot, so I'm going to skip it. A very important operation to do with hexadecimals is uh, exclusive or. And exclusive or is also important operation on, on binary numbers. Let's do it on binary numbers first. So let's say that I have, uh, what number would that be? That would be 14 and I want to do XOR, which is sometimes denoted by plus in a circle. And let's do this. So I'm XORing 14 and 6. Uh, so the way XOR works, it's like uh, addition without the carry. So 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 1 is 2, which is like this in binary. But I don't carry the 1. I just write down the 0. And so similarly, this is also 0 and 1 plus 0 is 1, and that's it. So uh, 14 XOR 6 is 8. So you can see that the, the good thing about throwing away the carry is that the number of digits stays the same, and so it just uh, gives you, it's, if you're a group theory buff, it's just like a, the group uh, Z mod Z2 to the fourth power I shouldn't have said that. Maybe occasionally there will be an individual who knows what I mean by that. So if I'm going to do uh, exclusive or on two hexadecimal numbers, like let's try 4FE and OX246, you could, you could make some kind of uh, exclusive OR table. I haven't I haven't memorized my exclusive OR table. It kind of reminds you how terrible kindergarten is. You, I mean, if you've never seen the addition table before, how complicated is it to learn it? Well, you can remind yourself of the difficulty of that by writing down the table for XOR and, and revisiting that experience. But the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to translate these numbers to binary. And the way to translate hex to binary is to do it digit by digit. Let me show you what I mean here. So here's a, uh, a silly Python program. 
that prints out decimal number, hex number, binary number. And you just have to remember which binary numbers the hex digits are associated with. Um, so notice that as the hex digits go from 0 to F, the binary numbers take on all possible four-digit values. And actually that's mainly the significance of hex decimals is it lets you translate um, from binary to something that is a little bit more easily dealt with by a human being. So translating all this stuff to binary, let's see. Oh, I don't need that, do I? So what is 4 in binary? I'm going to be saying zeros and ones a lot here. I've already messed up. Gosh, I suck. Um, so 4 in binary is 0, 1, 0, 0. F is 1, 1, 1, 1. That one's easy to remember. E is 1 less than F, so it's 1, 1, 1, 0. And now I have to write in the right places here these digits. So 2 is uh, 0, 0, 1, 0. 4 is 0, 1, 0, 0. 6 is 0, 1, 1, 0. And now I do my XORing. I get 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. OK. Um, so now there's this last one is 0, and the result is 6, and what is this? This is 8 and 2, it's 11, but 11 is B. And what is this? This is 8. So the answer is OX 6B8. You can probably make an adorable droid character in your next sci-fi short story called OX 6B8. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I checked my answer. Um, you know, that's pretty much all. Oh, I wanted to show off this also, I guess. So there's a, uh, a terminal application. You know, frequently you need to look at, uh, at files, look at their guts when you're doing cryptography and digital forensics and some other things. So I have a, a file here, F1. Let me show you the contents of F1. And I'm sorry that my commands are running, are looping around. I'm sure that makes it a little bit less fun. So here's the uh, the file F1. It just contains ah, and you can see here that if I if I do a hex dump xxd on F1, I get uh, just a bunch of six ones and then an OA, and that's because the ASCII code in hex for A is six one. And so it's just a bunch of six ones, and the, the thing tells you this right here. And uh, the hexadecimal number A is new line character. You can verify all that for yourself if you type uh, man ASCII, and then go down to the appropriate place. Um, it's not showing the whole table. This thing is really, why would it present it like that? It's really strange. So A is uh, 61 in hex. 97 in decimal and 141 in octal. I leave it to you to explore octal on your own. Um, so you can you can x dump any file. If I got I've got lots of files in here. Um, oh my gosh, pixels dot dot. What if I do xx? I think that's a huge file. If I x dump uh, hex dump the pixels, then it's blah, just vomits all over the screen. Um, if you want to see files in binary, you can do xxd-b, and it gives you 0, 1 version, and it might be kind of interesting to xxdf1 both in hex and in binary and compare the two. You'll notice that this second one is shorter and easier for a human being to understand, and like I was saying before, that's kind of the point of hex. Uh, two hex digits make one byte of information. So 61 is the same thing as this, as you can verify, right? Here is 6, here is 1, and the whole point of the hex is to give a, a human readable version of, uh, you know, files as machines understand them. And I think that's all I wanted to say, so I'm going to stop the video. Oh, one more thing, psych. Uh, there's another program called Bless, which you might like better has nice nicer output and that's it